And we have Kyle. Okay, first question of the day. <clears throat> this section is about local linearization, which I don't know if you're familiar with or not. I was going to ask about the word linearization. Um, what does that kind of say to you is going to be happening? How about linear? Yeah. So linearization means that we are going to be creating lines. Um, the goal of this section is that you are most likely going to run into problems where you might know the slope near a, a location, but not exactly at the location you need. So you can use the tangent line close to it to estimate its value. So let's, let's say um, the square root of x is going to be the function we're going to be looking at. Okay, you guys know that at x equals 3, mm, nope, let me say that again, at x equals 9, the height of square root of x would be 3 because it's an easy number to calculate. But if you were asked to calculate square root of 9.1 and you don't have a calculator, uh, it's a little bit tougher. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the tangent line at 3, eh, at 9, to estimate that height at square root of 9.1. It's not super useful, I mean, in my opinion, but uh, that's the topic. To me, it, the reason it's not as useful is you're kind of using very small and minute numbers that are close to a good number to estimate an answer when I would say a good portion of you would probably be using calculators normally to do that. And so in that case, it would be just as easy to use the calculator to evaluate square root of 9.1. So this is a very specific situation in that if you're not allowed a calculator, so AKA the AP test portions, um, they'll ask you to estimate a value using local linearization. And that's what it is. Uh, by the end of the year, it's not useful. That's okay. Uh, you're still tested on it, so I'll teach it to you. There are definitely is topics in Calc that are like that, that are very specific and really only good for one thing. And in the end, they're not going to be super useful because you have other ways to do it. This is one of them. It's, it's not difficult. It's just like a lot of parts, right? Like it's, so I don't know if the, what I described to you made sense. Um, that's the end goal as to what we're doing. We're going to use the tangent line at a nice location to estimate a not nice location. So local linearization, this is the explanation for what it is. So let's say you graph sine of x on your calculator, and you don't need to because it's up there, um, and you zoom in a whole bunch of times. No matter what graph you look at, if you zoom in on it a whole bunch of times, it's going to look like a straight line. Because you're looking at such a small piece that you wouldn't be able to see the curvature over that gradual of an area. Or I shouldn't say you wouldn't be able to detect it, your calculator can't because the pixels are only so big that if the amount of bend is less than a pixel width, then it can't draw that. It would just draw a straight line in pixels. Your human eye might be able to see it if it was drawn perfectly to begin with, but um, pixels can't. So that's what local linearization is. And we're going to use this idea <coughs> to uh, estimate values. So we'll start with this one, though. So it says, can you estimate the slope of this portion of the sine curve? Andrew, who's going to help us estimate that? We'll get people involved today, because this is a good one for it. 12. 12. Kale, what would you estimate that slope to be? One? Oh, I suppose i got to get up now. It'll be quicker if I go. OK, so I would have estimated it the same, too. This was kind of what you guys were supposed to do in the previous section, was doing a lot of estimating of slope. 
because you're just getting an idea. So I would agree, I would say it's about one. What can you say about the slope of the tangent line at zero on the function y equals sine of x? Andrew? Oh, I should have had you pre-roll a whole bunch of people. I would have been part of it. Uh, 37. 37 or 6? 37. Yeah, so I thought you said. Um, what about the equation of the tangent? Actually, is that the next question? Oh, okay. What do you think the slope of the tangent line is at that same location? Good. This is basically to tell you that the tangent line and the slope of the graph are, well, they're always the same. Okay, the equation of the tangent line is next. 30. 3? 30. Oh. Zero. Nobody. 2. You're officially 2 now, I think, right? You either got to be 35 or 2. I, I, I would have to say you're officially 2. I don't think you've sat up here for a while, though. Okay, Jesse. Uh, what two things do we need for the equation of a tangent line? Okay, the point is going to be zero, zero because it's just asking right in the center. The slope is one. How do I write that? Remember the point slope? Yep, that would work. It'll be overkill. It's going to be overkill for this one, big time. Y minus zero equals one X minus zero. So this actually simplifies down a lot to just Y equals X. It's like one X plus zero. Um, but this is what we're gonna be trying to do today is come up with the equation of tangent line. And then let's say we wanted to estimate <coughs> the value of sine of X at 0 0.05 then what we would do is plug 0 0.05 into this equation, and then that would be an estimate of the correct answer. So our estimate of sine of 0 0.05 radians would be about 0 0.05. And if you use your calculator to figure out the real answer, it's gonna be awfully close to that probably. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a little bit less than that, like 0.4999. Oh, yeah, make sure it's a radian. Does nobody got that? What's the real answer? Perfect. So 0 0.0499, probably a bunch of nine. Um, so the real answer is very close to it. And that's, that's just how we're going to sort of estimate answers using nicer numbers. All right. This is pretty much what you guys hated yesterday. I don't know why this part went so bad. I think it was because you were expecting to do a lot more than just estimate the slope of one. That, that's my guess. And or some people are probably having a little bit of trouble drawing them right now too because you're just not used to it. So if I draw the tangent lines at A, B, and C, um, let me achieve you the line tool because otherwise it's not going to come out great. Um, if I look at A, if I zoomed way in on A, I would say this looks like like that line. If I zoomed way in on B, you would actually see the top of the curve would actually look like a flat line. If I zoomed really far in on the top of the curve, because your curve goes up and then comes back down, Right at the very center at the top, if I just keep zooming in, the line would actually look like that. It would be flat. And then C, let's see, C is not terribly different than A, it's just not as steep, but in a negative direction. So, uh oh. Uh, I'm gonna have to move that. That's about right. Oh, pretty close. 
So when you drive tangent line, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be relatively close. <clears throat> now if I, if I estimate these slopes, mm, I know this is more than a 45 degree angle. So I would estimate this is, 45 degree angle is one. So let's, let's say this is about what, like two? I'm gonna say that's about two. Uh, the blue one is super easy, it's flat. The green one is negative direction. A 45 in the negative direction is also a negative one. This is considered steeper, more negative. So two-ish as well, but negative. I mean, maybe the red one's three or something, I don't know. It doesn't actually matter the real end. When you're estimating, you don't have to have perfect. The main thing that's being looked for when you're estimating is if it's positive or negative, and if it's bigger than one or smaller than one. That's the main thing to focus. So like if it was not as steep as one, so you know, like that, I would call that like a half, that like a quarter, just kind of keep remotely estimate. It's not accurate in any which sense. Does that kind of make sense? Okay? I, I love it. Ask away if it doesn't. I, I know we're just estimating right now. Um, that's not a line. What's that? Forty-five degree angle is a slope of one, and so if your line is steeper than that, the answer is higher than one. If it's shallower, it's less than one. So, like this is one, I would call that two, that like a half. That's my rough estimates. So, for the for A, then would the quote unquote I guess bottom. Why I said more than one? Uh -huh. um, a, so there's the 45. Also oh, from the anywhere. Oh, there's no where it originates. Is that what you meant by yeah, bottom of the triangle? Yeah. Uh, sure, you can come from the bottom of the line. It actually wouldn't matter where you look. It's just the angle of the line itself. So anywhere you look on the line, it would be greater than the slope of one. So no matter where I move this 45 line, the red one is oh, no, steeper. I, I meant like, um, how you would know. Uh, That's how to come up with the number answer? No, no, no. It's like, if you said, uh, if you want to have the angle, like 45 right here is 1, and then here would be like 2 or something, where would you, like, if this was here, then it would be smaller than 1. It actually doesn't matter where you um, measure from. So if I decide to measure from here, then I would look at that. If I decide to measure from here. Okay, so it's always just straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's when you measure 45 degree angles, 40, measure a 45 degree angle, um, it's always measured against zero. So zero is always the flat line. That's what you're kind of asking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe there's a table right below it. Right? Oh, no. Do you guys think you could fill up the rest of these before we fill up the answers below it? Do your best. Go ahead. Well, then why would you ask him now? Okay, go. I'll give you your job. Yeah, they let you do all of it. That's your choice. Yes, we 
Sometimes it's a tough call. If you're, if you're, not, if you're not feeling confident about what we're working on at the time, I would probably come here for that hour and then leave again. I don't think that, I don't think that. I probably chose my seat in the room. Some of the lighting? It's like literally give me a paper that's saying. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe you just shut up. What is that? Well, there's no one. Um, he would definitely let you come to class, so like, okay. it's not. Ready for what? Trying to find. We just draw them on there? Yeah. Yep. So, like, if you had the Hey, what I, what I was surprised nobody asked about was the sharp points at B on those two graphs. So, at B, it's not. So there actually is no slope at sharp points because the limit coming from the left and the right is different slopes, and so there is no slope in the middle. I don't know if we've run into that yet or not. This is probably the first time, right? Correct. Yeah. That's that's why I was assuming I was assuming somebody was going to ask me about those. The only time you have a slope of zero if you have a smooth curve that is changing direction. Because if you zoom in enough, that line would look flat. If you zoom in on a sharp point, no matter how many times you zoom in, it's still going to make that sharp point. And it would never look flat. That's the easiest way of trying to describe why. I mean, the limit is the correct real answer. But no matter how many times you zoom in on sharp points, it will never look like a flat line. So zooming in on a calculator is the easiest way for you guys to visualize a slope, probably, because you're used to zooming in on a calculator. Um, D, we haven't talked about curvature yet either, correct? Right? No. Okay. So there's two terms we're going to be using a decent amount, concave up and concave down. It's not like physics where we're going to be doing concave and convex. I think that's physics. Probably. You guys talk about the focal point? Oh, OK. All right, you'll get there. Um, so if you have a graph that changes concavity, so it's concave up right here, and then it changes to concave down. So curving up to curving down, frequently you're going to have a slope that is undefined in between. Doesn't have to, but frequently you will. If you look at the rest of these graphs, they all have some, well, they don't all. This first graph is an upside down U. That entire graph is concave down. It's curving down everywhere. Second graph is straight lines, which means there is no curvature. 
third graph is essentially like parts of a parabola, you know, put together. So on the left, this is considered curving downwards. On the right, it's also considered curving downwards. So if you think of an upside down U, like the parabola, you know what, this smart board is gonna have to be Wait, but there's a curve yep. Yeah, I didn't get the detail. If you think of concavity, so C is the one that usually confuses most because of the way it's drawn. If your curve looks like any part of a downward U, it would be curving downward. So when I look at this part, to me, that looks like right there. It is curving downwards. This portion looks like right there. So if I take those two portions of a downward curve, it would look like that. It's, it's a weird graph. A downward U is obviously easy because that's the, like the definition of concave now for most people. This one has different curvatures. So this is curving upwards. So if I look at an upwards U, this portion looks like, uh, how do I draw that? I guess it would be like right here. And then this is part of a downwards curve right there. I, and there's definitely different ways to, there is, there is an actual definition of curving up and curving down. If your slopes are decreasing, that's curving downwards. So look, we have a slope of two, then zero, then negative two. The slopes were going down. That has, that's not good. Um, if I would have read multiple slopes on this portion, the answers would have been getting smaller. The answers would have been getting smaller. The answers would have been getting bigger, smaller. And that's only when you look at slopes, not the height. When you look at the slopes on a graph, if the slopes are getting smaller, it's curving downwards. Okay, so now talking about curvature, we'll get to the bottom here. It says when the curve is concave up. Now what I don't like about that is you only had one tiny example of curving up on your graph, on the four graphs. There was only one portion that was curving up, and that was graph D right here. And they, you didn't even have to find a slope anywhere on that. If I were to draw a tangent line right here, it's basically asking you where would your tangent line be, above or below the graph. That's what it's trying to ask, even though it doesn't say. So if your graph is curving upwards, your tangent line will always be below the curve. Now you could say an underestimate. Because remember, the goal for today was we're gonna use that tangent line to come up with an estimate for the answers. So if your tangent line is below the curve, then you know your answer is gonna be underestimated by a tiny bit. If your tangent line is above the curve, your answer is gonna be slightly above the real answer. That was like the square root one that I did with you guys. Our answer was slightly bigger. That's where this is leading. The turning point, which you absolutely know nothing about yet, which is, I don't know why this is included in here yet. This is what's called the turning point. It actually has a name, it's an inflection point, but we'll get there. What is the slope gonna be at a turning point? Oh, excuse me, that's D. Turning point meant the max or min. I wasn't reading all of it. At the very top or the bottom of a curve, the answer is gonna be zero or undefined. So when we were at the top of a parabola, the slope was zero. When we were at the bottom of that absolute value, there wasn't any. 
the plane of inflection. Yeah, got a sharp point. Oh, let's E. Come on. Why are they doing this? I should learn to read ahead. It is. That was E apparently. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's that's these two. You're looking at graph D. Yeah. I was answering choice D and E. I don't know if you're confusing with two D. No, I mean like vertical. That one is vertical. Undefined? No, I was just asking if Straight up and down. That's all. Okay. <clears throat> it's a different type of undefined. So the, the undefined, I guess we could call, I guess we could call vertical no slope um, if you want to have a difference between them, but undefined is usually what people say. Oh, undi I gotta learn how to spell. <laughs> defined. Look at wearing socks today is just killing me. My brain is frying. At a point on a linear function, the tangent is the same as the line. I think you don't even care about that. On a straight line graph, you should be able to figure out the slope everywhere. So. Okay, I think that's probably all the further we're going to get. The room is getting warm, man. Uh, this this set of notes is actually really long. Um, it's not super difficult. There's just a lot of flat out information.